As societies developed, the need for more precise timekeeping was necessary. Using the sun and moon, in other words, the year and the month, was enough at first. But eventually, a shorter period of time, a regularly repeating week, came into being. One of the earliest and most common forms was the market week. This was based on how often the market was open. For example, it might be open for trade every five days, making a five-day week. In some regions, the market might be open every day, but in a different town. In these cases, the days of the week were often named after the town whose market was open. These early weeks were fundamental to setting the pace of everyday life. Market day wasn't just for buying and selling, but also to celebrate, to meet others, and to exchange news. In a society without internet, or any telecommunications, this was essential. As larger empires formed, weeks gained the additional function of regulating civic life and government. For example, in Republican Rome, the eight-day market week became tied to its political system, since market day was when rural citizens came into town to vote. In Han China, government officials would get two days off every ten-day week. But the seven-day week didn't start as a market week, instead its roots lie in astronomy and myth. In ancient Mesopotamia around 2000 BC, the number seven developed religious significance and the seventh of each month was marked as holy. The importance ancient Mesopotamians placed on the number can also be seen in mythology. In Inanna's descent to the underworld, she takes seven divine decrees, passes through seven gates, then faces the seven judges of the underworld. In the epic of Atrahasis, the gods are upset with humanity and send a seven-day long flood to destroy it. This story is echoed later in Hebrew tradition, except that it's creation which lasts seven days. Some centuries later, the Babylonians started to associate gods with the wandering lights in the sky. The moon and sun were already worshipped as Sin and Shamash, but they had noticed a few stars seemed to move through the sky as well. We now call them planets, but to the ancients, these were divine omens. Venus became a symbol of Ishtar, the goddess of love and beauty. Mars represented Nergal, the god of war and destruction, and so on. Now it happens to be that there are five planets visible without telescopes. Along with the sun and moon, that makes seven deities. This was quite the coincidence. By the time of the Greeks, the cosmology of the world evolved from a domed sky over a flat earth to a geocentric model. It was now believed that the planets were spheres suspended on other spheres, which spun around the sphere that was the earth. While Babylonians developed complex mathematical models to predict where planets would be in the sky, the Greek notion of spheres inside spheres raised an interesting question. Which planet was closest to the Earth? Obviously the moon was the closest, since it eclipsed the sun and occulted the planets. But the others were quite a puzzle. One solution was to use the order of the importance of the gods, with the moon and sun followed by Venus, Mercury, and the others. The philosopher Plato attested to this ordering, but without the religious overtones. Later, the Stoics of Greece adopted an order that made the sun the middle of the seven celestial spheres. This was partly due to the teachings of Diogenes of Babylon. Given that the Babylonians didn't think of celestial spheres, it's more likely that this was based on the speed that the planets moved through the constellations. This system suited the Stoics because they believed that the sun ruled over everything, and so being in the center made the most sense. This was formalized into the Ptolemaic geocentric model, and while the reasoning was wrong, the result was sort of correct, except with the earth and moon switching places with the sun. As the Greeks were exposed to Mesopotamian culture, the Babylonian gods were associated with their Greek counterparts, Nabu the god of scribes, with Hermes the messenger god, Ishtar with Aphrodite as goddesses of love, Ninurta with Kronos as gods of agriculture, etc. This process is called syncretization. Another aspect of Mesopotamian culture also carried over, a day split into 24 hours. For the purpose of astrology and reading omens, each hour was assigned to a god based on geocentric order. The days were also assigned to the god of its first hour, and since seven is prime, the gods of each day repeated in an increasingly familiar cycle. After the conquest of Alexander the Great, this practice spread throughout the Hellenistic kingdoms and even briefly made its way through India into China. A few centuries later, the Romans conquered the Mediterranean and adopted many of the local customs, including a solar calendar from the Egyptians, which they called the Julian calendar. This might be when the seven-day week started to gain popularity in Rome. By this time, the Romans had already encountered the Jews and noted their use of a seven-day week.
The historian Cassius Dio comments on the siege of the Temple of Jerusalem in 63 BC. If the Jews had continued defending it on all days alike, he could not have got possession of it. As it was, they made an exception of what are called the Days of Saturn, and by doing no work at all on those days, afforded the Romans an opportunity in this interval to batter down the wall. The historian notes that while the day was a Saturday, the Jews didn't actually worship Saturn. This is the earliest known overlaying of the planetary and biblical weeks. Later in the 2nd century AD, the Christians would be mistaken for sun worshippers, since they prayed on Sunday, facing east. The Roman gods also became syncretized to the Greek gods. This was where we got the planet names we use today. From the Babylonian gods to the Greeks, then the Romans. Ninurta became Kronos, then Saturn. Marduk became Zeus, then Jupiter. Nergal became Ares, then Mars. Shamash became Helios, then Sol. Ishtar became Aphrodite, then Venus. Nabu became Hermes, then Mercury and Sin became Selene, then Luna. Gradually, the seven-day week supplanted the older eight-day Roman market week. There are a few sparse references to the planetary week in the first century BC. In 30 BC, the poet Horace referenced Thursday in his satires too. Jupiter, who brings and takes away our great sorrows, if the court and fever would leave my child, on the day you appoint for fasts, he'll stand naked in the Tiber at dawn. This calendar, dated from between 19 BC and 4 AD, showed a seven-day cycle, lettered H to G, alongside the eight-day market week, lettered A to H. This shows that there was a gradual, rather than immediate shift from one system to the other. Going into the first century AD, the number of references to the seven-day week increased. Graffiti from Pompeii before its destruction in 79 labeled days as belonging to various gods. This stick calendar from the Baths of Titus built in 81 showed the gods arranged in the weekly order. From Rome, the seven-day week spread to northern Europe. The German and Norse gods were syncretized to produce the English names of the days, except Saturday since they didn't find a good match. In 98 AD, the historian Tacitus noted, Mercury is the deity whom they chiefly worship, and on certain days they deem it right to sacrifice to him, even with human victims. Hercules and Mars they appease with more lawful offerings. Here, Mercury is Odin, the wanderer, Mars is Tyr, the god of war, and Hercules is Thor, though in the days of the week he was associated with Jupiter, as they were both gods of thunder. Finally, Freya was matched to Venus as goddesses of love, and Sol and Luna became the sun and the moon. The earliest record that I could confirm that has both a date and a day of the week is from Romania, commemorating the achievements of Ascentius Enicetus. This is dated the tenth day before the Calends of Unius in the year of consuls Antonio Augustus II and Geta Kaiser, on the day of Jupiter or in other words, Thursday, May 23rd, 205. This day matches our current cycle, so it's possible that the seven-day system we use has been unbroken since at least then. The Romans considered Saturday to be the first day, because Saturn was the first planet counting inwards from the stars. However, in 274 AD, Emperor Aurelian made worship of the sun the state religion, and in 321, Emperor Constantine declared, On the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in the cities rest, and let all workshops be closed. In 336, the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea moved the Holy Day from Saturday to Sunday. It's probably this new emphasis on Sunday that led to its becoming the first day of the week. The Christian seven-day week came from the creation story which it inherited from Judaism, where God made the world in six days and rested on the seventh. Though the planetary week mapped neatly onto this, the church objected to it as a pagan custom. In the 4th century AD, Pope Sylvester I tried to abolish the practice and replace it with numbered days. He partly succeeded, which is why many Romance languages use derivations of the Lord's Day and Sabbath for Sunday and Saturday. For example, Italian uses Domenica and Sabato, and French uses Dimanche and Samedi. Since then, the seven-day week spread far and wide, via Christian influence to northern and eastern Europe, then through colonization and conquest to the rest of the world. In the late 19th century, Japan and Korea adopted the Gregorian calendar while modernizing, and the names of the planets were mapped to the five classical Chinese elements. This represented a final syncretization with old Taoist ideas. There have been some attempts to move away from it. From 1793 to 1805, Republican France used a 10-day week with numbered days as part of its metric calendar. 
from 1931 to 1940, the Soviet Union adopted a six-day week. Otherwise, the seven-day week has been a mainstay of societies around the world. From Sumerian myths to Babylonian astronomy, from Rome, Christianity, and to the wider world, this has been the story of the days of the week.